Good evening, guys. So, welcome to another uh, video analysis, bowling analysis video. So, in today's video, we'll be looking at the youth qualifying squad. So, as again, this is another video on the uh, Singapore National Youth Championships 2022. And we'll be looking at the youth squad, which is one of the most competitive ones, which is the highest level for obviously for the you know the youth championships because uh, you can only be you know, I think under 21 and below in order to participate in the youth championships. So this is the most competitive squad for that particular category. Obviously, when we go into the Singapore National Championships, as you can see in the schedule here, later on, I think in the following week, then there will be an open category where there's no age cap and there's no average cap as well. So that will be even more competitive for the open category in the following week. So today we're looking at this particular squad. Uh, as of recording this, this is the 1st of June. We're looking at squad E. There's one block and they play six games. So you can see that when they started the squad, they were on fresh lanes, freshly oiled lanes, and they're on pattern A. So since this is the youth squad, uh, probably I will try to you know, hard talk too much about their physical game because most of their physical games are pretty solid. And instead, maybe I will just try and pay attention to more of how they play the lanes, right? The tactical aspect of uh, their qualifying games because this is the best, uh, this is the most competitive squad with the best physical game for the youth championships. So I think the most competitive age group, not the most competitive squad. So let's first and foremost, let's take a look at the oil pattern that they're playing tonight, which is the pattern A. And as of recording, this is actually at 820. So I think they are well into the middle of their block. So they are at around like the third game, three out of six games. So for a start, this is a 44 medium uh, distance oil pattern. And the ratio is 2.59 is to 1. So rather competitive. And you can see that this is actually a little bit more difficult. Maybe I can bring out my pen. Right. This pattern is a little bit more difficult compared with the pattern B that was played by the you know, the other age groups, because we can see that I think for the under 18, they were mostly playing in pattern B, as well as the under 12 as well is actually pattern B. So in pattern B is actually a little easier. So we can spend some time and talk about it. That This is pattern B. Why I feel that generally pattern B is slightly easier is because it has higher ratio, 2.75 is to 1.08, compared to the lower ratio of pattern A, which is 2.59 is to 1. So the lower the ratio, the more difficult the pattern. And you can see that even in the middle is 1.08 because at the edge of the middle here, there's a bit of a slope in the oiling volume here. So this makes it a little, gives this area a little bit more allowance between bots 15 and 14. But if you look at this particular pattern, this is now pattern A, right? What the youth score is bowling right now. In this particular lane, uh, bots 15, 13, 14, and 15 is totally flat. So you no longer get that allowance that was actually uh, in like the 15 bot range as was present with this particular pattern B. So in pattern B, bots 13, 14, and 15, which is around here, if I use my you know, pen to highlight here, there's a little bit of a slope. So there's actually more allowance here. And if you look at the more competitive pattern A, which they're bowling right now, 13, 14, and 15. You can see that is a whole block of oil, flat block of oil, it's totally flat. So it's actually more competitive. And there's uh, other reasons where this is also a bit, this pattern is a little bit more difficult as well. Is that you can see here, bots 8 to 10 is also totally flat again, as compared to maybe here. So for pattern B, 8 to 10, there's a little bit of a gentle slope here. So a little bit more forgiving. And again, you have another plateau at bots 5 to 7 and another plateau at bots 1 to 3. So generally it's plateau, a bit more oil plateau again, a bit more oil plateau. So these areas are generally flat. So the only allowance in this oil pattern is only in this fine area here from bots 10 to perhaps 13. So from bots 10 to 13, there's a bit of slope in the oil. This is the only allowance that we generally see. So in terms of like strategy, right? If we look at this lane, uh, this like lane chart from top to down, where is 10 to 13? This is 10, right? So this is bot 11, 12, and 13. So if we were to use lines and try and draw straight lines from here, uh, can I have a straight line here? Okay, so this is one, and this is bot 
10, right? So I'm going to draw, try my best to draw a straight line from bot 10. Okay. Okay. So these are the, this is the general area between these two red lines on my screen here. This is the general area of allowance, that the small area of allowance that the bowlers have. So ideally from the fresh, their lines of attack would probably be something similar along here. They'll be aiming to like around board 10 to, to 13 at the arrow zone here. Or so they can go in this area, go out and have their ball come in in this. So this is one particular line. So they have alert. Oops. Oh man, this is a bit more difficult for me. So quite hard to actually draw here. Oh, again, bot 10, one line, bot 13 is actually here, uh, okay, so this is the small area, so there are lines of attack again, let me use a finer pen, generally they could project the ball around here, so at the arrow zone, it might go through around here. It goes into this zone and it comes back. So this is one line of attack. Other lines of attack could be that they play a little bit deeper, but they have their break point close to this area. So where their ball exits the lane. So they play a bit deeper. So they play aiming at about fourth arrow and they try to aim the break point. So have the ball break around this area. So where the break point is where the ball starts to curve. So this is another potential line as well for the bowlers who have the ref rate and the angle. So obviously for the female bowlers, um, they, because they don't get that much ref rate, they can't play the deeper angles. Generally, they might be playing a more gentle area around here. So also projecting their ball at the arrow zone is also about the third arrow there. This took us third arrow is about 15, right? So about in between second and third arrow, so they project their ball through that and their ball should stay in this, in so-called this allowance zone for most of the time before it hooks a little bit back into the pocket. So they'll be playing a rather tight line or alternatively, they could obviously send the ball straight. So much straighter down the line here, going towards here. Maybe I can use a different color, like maybe yellow. They can, so for the ladies, they can play it something like this, quite straight in this area and then have the ball hook. So the ball should be also hooking around in the breakpoint region, like around about 10, at point to bot 13 at the break point. So this is what the ladies would generally play. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the guys because if the, for the male bowlers, right, if they play deep and they miss too far out, so let's say they miss this way, their ball would stay here and it would finish, it would miss the pocket entirely. So that is one potential pitfall for the guys that's playing the deeper line. For the guys that has a higher ball speed or lesser ref rate, if they play a more gradual, a tighter line, that means they send their ball out around the third arrow. Project their ball from around maybe board 22, send it out to third arrow, and then have the ball, have the break point be close to the 10 board or the 9 board. Generally, they should still be all right because most of their ball, when it's starting to curve, it is still in this allowance zone here between boards 10 to, 15, 10 to 13. So this line should be generally safer on the fresh, obviously. So what happens when the oil starts to break down is that if you have a lot of bowlers that are bowling this particular this particular line that I've drawn, right? Let's say for the male bowlers. So this particular line will break down and then they will have to shift deeper. So they have to go deeper like this and they have to go even deeper. So they will have to start playing the fourth as well as the fifth arrows or even fifth and a half arrow at the arrow zone before the block ends, right? They go deeper and deeper, but their break point should generally stay around the same. Generally around board, probably around board nine to 10, around at the break point region where the ball starts to where the ball starts to hook, it's actually around here in the allowance zone and where it completes its hook and starts to turn, should be around nine to 10. So visually, when you see your ball starts to turn on the lane, like maybe if I who have to finish, so one of the squads has finished qualifying. Uh, like if you see, so let's just take a look at one of the shots here by Nigel Tay. Visually, if you look at where the ball starts to change direction on the lane, that is where our eye visually sees the break point, right? Because it's where the ball starts to, no, starts to change direction. So uh, going back to the charts, pattern A itself, yeah. 
So there's that. So this is our visual breakpoint. It's actually around here. Uh, sorry, let me reverse that. So it's around bot nine to ten. So this will be the how the guys attack the 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 python and for the ladies as well. So for the ladies, maybe I can draw it in blue or maybe in black. So for the ladies, if they're gonna attack the python, generally they want to play a really tight line by going down here into the pocket. So that means they start. So they drop their ball or they release their ball generally around like bots 15, 14, around there. Have most of their balls stay straight in this allowance zone. And also the end of their break point here will be also be around bot 9 to 10. And then it hooks into the pocket. And obviously as the lane dries up, they will have to shift a little bit more to the inside. But because uh, the ladies actually don't have as much like angular rotation and don't have as much ref rate, uh, their ball doesn't turn as much, so they can actually keep their movements relatively small. And you just have to move a little bit deeper. Like the deepest they go should be playing around third to third and a half arrow at the arrow zone. And then you just go a little bit deeper to get the oil in the middle part of the lane. So they should be playing generally around here. So for ladies who are playing like straight, obviously they will play on the right side of the lane. So maybe they can play around here, around bots 7 to 10. So they will send their ball around here. 7 to 10 straight down and have the ball hook in to the pocket around here. So that's one potential line. So around here, hooks in. And then as they move in, they will move into the allowance zone and around here as well. And then as they move in, so same thing around this particular zone. So that's how generally the lady should be approaching. Like in my mind, that's how the lady should be approaching this pattern. Should be trying to combat this pattern this way. Okay. So let's take a look at the use and see how, whether they are playing that particular line like I mentioned. So first and foremost, we can take a look at the ladies because I've talked about the ladies, right? So you can see instantly here, uh, I think this is Geraldine Hoon, a national bowler as well, playing in a particular zone that I already mentioned. So the particular zone that they should be playing uh, should be around bots. Well, they should be releasing their ball. It depends on their ref rate, but this is a spare shot. So is this is uh, Natalie Ang from Bio Bowling Academy. Like it depends on her ref rate. Let's see what zone she's playing. So she's playing around this line, right? This line. Have the ball hook around here. So same similar zone that one I mentioned is between the second and the third arrow at the arrow zone here. So the arrow zone for her is somewhere around here, right? So about between second and third arrow, the arrow zone. And having the ball hook the break point, the ball change directions at the break point around board nine to ten at the maximum at most, and then it hooks into the pocket. So same thing here, we can see another national bowler here. This is Ong I can't see her name, right? Lei Jin or something. So she's playing a little bit further out. She has a more direct line. She plays around maybe black is a little bit hard to see. Uh, let's use blue instead. So she's playing around this line, right? Also close to the second arrow zone and then have the ball hook into the pocket. So that's how they combat the lanes. Okay, we have another... Is it Megan or Megan Tan from Agape? Okay, going straight down. So it gets a nice strike. So she's going straight down, playing also around the second arrow. I sh suppose the zone that is... Uh, for her, she should be targeting around bot 9 because uh, she, sh she should be sending the ball straight down this area, right? Bot 9 here. Because the allowance zone is from... Remember, our allowance zone is from 10 to 10 to 13. So sending it close around bot 9, bot 8 and have the ball hooked a little bit. So if she missed a little bit to the left, she would send her ball straight into the allowance zone and that will give her a little bit of miss room to the left. If she misses to the right, then that's it. There's no room to the right for her to miss to, so the ball will never recover. So for her playing that uh, straight down line, directly straight down under board 8 to board 9, she will have missed room to the left, but no missed room to the right. So she has to be rather accurate in playing that line. Okay, this squad has done. That is for the ladies. So we only have one squad here to watch for the ladies. Okay. So for, is it Ong Lee Lin? Okay, Ong Lee Lin. Okay, now I can see he's playing Lee Lin. is playing around quite a straight tight line as well, like what I've already anticipated earlier. 
So around the second, I think around board eight, if I'm not wrong, board eight straight down, and then I think ball hook a little bit. Okay, so this is a spare shot, obviously. So you will go for a cross lane spare. So using a spare ball play cross lane. So for the newer bowlers, no, because I'm talking like for line playing and all that, it's quite a, an, uh, a more advanced thing for competitive bowlers. So obviously for the newer bowlers, uh, for spare shot, always go diagonal across the lane because uh, rather than going straight, so if you're going straight down the lane like this, it's actually a lot more difficult to hit the corner pin spares because if you miss a little bit on the left and right on this red line, you will totally miss the spare. But if you're playing the diagonal cross lane spare, that means uh, the blue line, if you miss a bit left and right, generally you'll find that you should still be able to touch the pins and hit that spare. Oh, she's playing a little bit deeper. She's actually playing this line that I mentioned. Maybe she missed. So uh, Leilin here is actually playing like the... I think my eye saw her landing the ball around... bots 12, I think? Around 12. She sent it out a little bit. And that ball, I should, I think, she didn't send out far enough. I think it overhooked. Yeah. So I think ideally her first shot, she, this is probably a trial shot that she's trying the inside part of the lane. Because ideally, earlier, I think she was playing around bots 8. Okay, so I think this is a miss from Geraldine Hoon there, who's cross pocket. So Geraldine is probably trying to send it straight down in that bot 10, bot 12, bot 13 area. But earlier she missed just a tear to the left and it went cross pocket. Again, we have uh, Natalie again. Let's see if I can see where her ball lands around here. She's playing a little bit deeper. Okay, the ball doesn't recover enough. She's playing straight deeper in this, in the allowance zone that we mentioned earlier. That means ball about 13, 12 to 13. But in this case, her ball actually didn't recover. So either she didn't execute well, she didn't get the rotation on the ball, that is one possible reason, or it might be time for a ball change to a slightly more aggressive ball because her ref rate couldn't make the ball you know, change direction, recover and get a nice angle into the pocket. Okay, so that's for the ladies. And let's look at the guys. So for the guys, earlier my prediction was that Ideally, right, since the allowance zone is, this is, that is pattern, let me close the chart for pattern B, right? So let's do this pattern A. So since the allowance zone is in this region, right, from bots 10 to 13, ideally, the guy should be playing a lot deeper. But on the fresh, they could either straight away play this allowance zone, but as they, as the lace dry up, then they will have to move left. So their arrow should be around, so the arrow zone should be aiming around the, fourth arrow and then set, say a ball should be landing around 25 maybe even 27 then goes through the fourth arrow they have their ball curve and break around the allowance zone in around bot 10 here and then goes into the pocket then as they go deeper they have to actually target like the fifth arrow right so as the as the night goes on the lane dries up the front part of the lane dries up they have to go deeper but their break point should be relatively the same so the furthest their break point should be should be around bot uh, 8 or 9, right? Because the allowance zone starts at board number 10. So let's see if this is what, they, what the boys are actually playing. Let's see if my prediction is correct. Or oh, they're playing something totally different from what I predicted. Okay. This is time. Got distracted by something that fell on the floor. Okay, maybe go into theater mode, easier to see here. I can't really see well, but looks like for this particular bowler, I think Titus, he is actually landing his ball straight in the allowance zone there. So his ball actually goes like second to third arrow, I think out. 
So he is, his ball is mostly staying in the allowance zone. So keeping a rather straight line, hasn't moved in a lot yet. And this particular Singapore bowler, I can't see the name here. He's playing a lot of a deeper line. So I think he's already playing like fourth arrow, which is uh, what I predict as well, because this is rather late into the squad. I think it's around the, it should be the fourth game at least in the squad, or maybe even the fifth game. For two ender bowlers with higher ref rate, Okay, this particular bowler, I can't see his name as well from BIS, goes a lot deeper. So he's actually playing like 4th to 4th and a half arrow, sending the ball out. Okay, and then for, I can't see the name again, quite low resolution for the Singapore bowler here. He's actually playing more to the outside. So around the 2nd and 3rd arrow, a lot of a straighter line and then having that ball go into the pocket. So all of their breakpoints should be rather similar, should be around bots 9 to bot 10. Uh, we have Hong Jun Hao from Agape here. Let's see what line he plays. Is it a two-hander or one-hander? Stance looks a bit like a two-hander. Yep, two-hander here. Oh, it goes quite deep, relatively straight. So fourth arrow as well. So from Jun Hao's angle, we can see that he plays a line that is something like this. He lands his ball actually around 25, sends it through the fourth arrow so it goes through the brick point. Then same thing, it ends and breaks around the 9 and 10 board and then it hooks back into the lane. So it looks like it's a pretty tight line. I think he lands his ball like around 24 to 23. Pretty, pretty tight line but same thing, the brick point is what we predicted around bots 9 to 10. So let's go to another screen. Let's see if we can see the uh, Lane play here. I'll currently see the angle there. Okay, so for this particular our bowler here from BIS, so that is a spare shot, but it hits a pocket. So he's going a lot deeper already. So he's going around the like the fifth arrow at the target zone, at the arrow zone, sending the ball. Same thing, probably around bots nine to ten at the break point, and then having the ball hook back into the pocket. Okay, for this particular bowler, we can't really see here. Let's see his lane, so not fair to judge. Okay, so the ball actually didn't recover, but you can see that our bowler in this green t-shirt here, is it Matthew? His name is quite blurred on the screen there. Also playing a slightly deeper line, I think he was playing around here. Around four, four and a half arrows the arrow zone but his ball just didn't have enough recovery didn't have enough angle to get the strike then it leaves him as a split I already see that one-handed bowlers lines here but looks like pretty inside line so this is a spare shot, so we're not going to judge the spare shot. Good attempt. The ball hooks though. Okay. So same thing. This break point goes a little bit out. So for a particular bowler from BIS, he actually sends it pretty deep, like four and a half arrow at the arrow zone. But I think his ball went a bit too far to the break point. It went as far as I think like bot 5 at the break point and it just couldn't recover enough and leaves him with a split. So there is no, not much miss room to the right. So in this case, if he misses to the right, then he suffers for it. And our one-handed bowler, Singapore bowler, can't see his name, but he was playing this around this line. So he's keeping it a little bit tighter. His break point is around that bot 9, bot 10 region. And earlier we can see that he landed his strike. So for this particular pattern, it's not super easy, like I mentioned at the start of this analysis video. Um, you will not have a lot of misroom to the to the right. If you play the lanes correctly, like what I described, the, the that's the ideal strategy for this particular pattern. Um, you will have some misroom to the left, like if you miss a little bit to the left, because your break point where your ball turns is in that allowance zone, that small slope in the oil pattern some miss room to the left but not a lot of miss room to the right so if you miss to the right that's it your shot is not going to recover 
Okay, that's not too bad for our boy, for our boy here, Buller in the pink in the green t-shirt. So same thing. Goes a bit deeper, keeps the break point at around board 9 to 10. And he managed to land the ball into the pocket. Didn't get the strike because probably didn't have enough entry angle or the ball didn't give him the right shape. So if I were him, I'll be like, the strategy for him probably will be to change his ball to something that recovers a little bit more angular, goes a bit further down the lane, but comes back at a bit of a sharper angle to get the entry angle to get the strike. So it's probably a ball issue for him at the point. His line is actually pretty decent. It's this, I can't see the name on the screen. Another BIS bowler. So it plays pretty deep. Yep, so it doesn't extend the ball out enough. So I see that the ball was actually breaking around bots, I think 13, almost close to 15. So he didn't send the ball out far enough to the right. That means he missed to the left. And even though he did hit the pocket, so he had some miss room, right? He did, his ball didn't overhook, had some miss room, but obviously didn't get the strike because the ball wasn't sent out far enough into the, the ideal break point and it went too high. But it's a relatively easy spare. Hopefully he makes it, chops it, unfortunately, because of the rotation he puts on his spare shot. And I didn't like the way he approached his spare shot as well. His line here is a bit too narrow. So ideally for that particular three pin spare, that is pins one, two, three, I think four, five, six, uh, that one, two, three, three, four, I think that's three, four, ten, right? For that three, four, ten, you still want to have a little bit of an angle going through here. And then you want to hit pin uh, three on the right side of pin three. Okay, so let's look at the other bowlers. Okay, for this particular pair of lanes, Especially on this pair, we can take a closer look at what lines are playing. Okay, we have a left-hander here. Left and a national bowler on the left. He's going relatively straight up. So he is actually playing straight in that second arrow zone, like I described earlier. Very similar line as for the ladies. Because he probably has the higher ball speed to compensate. And he can set, play a straighter line, so his ball is straight away landing as well as going into that allowance zone. Okay, in this case, didn't send the ball far, out far enough. For, is this uh, Wenif Wang or something? Can't see his name, national bowler. So he actually sent his ball, like he missed left. Then his ball actually like broke around like bot 15. So obviously not far enough, but still a relatively easy spare, right? So you can see that if you play the lanes correctly, the good strategy, you will have some miss room. So even though he missed left, it wasn't a total disaster. It wasn't a split. It's still a relatively easy spare. Just that he has no room to miss right. So because I think he probably understood that he couldn't miss right. So his instinct of his body is to pull the ball to the left. Especially if he feels that his downswing is going to the right. So I think this is a pretty good spare. Yep, this is what his uh, strike shot should have been. So going through, I think around fourth arrow or around just a little, yeah, around fourth arrow and have the ball break around like bots 10 and then hook a little bit, that goes into the pocket. Okay, you can see a two-hander on our right side of the screen, almost getting a strike. Uh, ball speed is a bit lacking, but you can see that he's playing a deeper line. I think he's playing close to fifth arrow around here, then sending his ball out. Same thing to the break point, like we mentioned earlier, around bots 9 to 10, and then having his ball recover, hook into the pocket. So it's actually a pretty decent shot, but maybe a little bit lacking on the ball speed. And the rotation, the angular rotation of his ball doesn't really suit this line as well because his ball is going more end over end forward row rather than more side row. And for his ball to recover, he actually needs a little bit more side row. So there's where the execution of the release at their level has to be on point for them to get the strike. So you can have play the correct line, but the execution of the release must be good as well. So nice strike here from, can't see his name, from a bowler here. So he's playing also around the fifth arrow, sending the ball out to bots nine, 10 the break point, turns there, recovers that a bit and then it goes into the pocket. So yeah, that is the kind of shape that we're seeing most of the bowlers play. So far, seems like what 
my analysis uh, that I made in the earlier of the of the video is turning out correct. That seems to be the ideal zone that most of the bowlers are playing. Okay, it's a strike, I think, almost a strike. So a little bit lacking in the ball speed department. So he's playing around deeper than fifth arrow, I think. So he's sending the ball around here. So I could see that his ball broke and stay around the board 9 to 10 region before it started hooking into the pocket. But I think it's lacking a little bit of ball speed. So his ball went a bit high, but still ends up with a rather easy spare, right? So still some room for error as, as long as he doesn't miss to the right. Okay, we have a left-hander. So nice for the left-hander. He's playing straight in the second arrow zone. So he's sending his ball straight down. Second arrow zone, uh, so he sends his ball out around the break point is actually around board 8 to 9 and then has his ball hooked into the pocket around here. Actually, he's, he, like, he plays a little bit straighter as well. So he's actually straight playing around boards 9 and 10, I believe. And then his ball hooks a bit. So he's actually at the edge of the allowance zone. So he can, for this particular ball, he can go a little bit deeper. He still has room to go a bit deeper into the lane if he wants to. But because he's a left-hander, there's not a lot of uh, carry down. So his side of the lane is rather fresh. So that's a strategy for playing the fresh, right? Which is to send his ball straight down like bots 9 to 10. That is the start of the allowance zone on the pattern. This bot 10 is the start of the allowance zone. What this particular pattern be? Ooh, missing that spare was rough, man. It hurts him a lot. Because that was not a difficult spare too. It was a, it was an easy two-pin spare. So sparing obviously very, very important at any level. The higher level you go, the more important spares are. Because uh, it gets more and more difficult. The, the pattern gets more and more competitive. And uh, when it gets more competitive, scores are lower. That's where the spare will make a lot more difference, right? Because 10 points out of like maybe 200 is 5%, right? Guys, compared to 10 points out of a score of 250, that's a lot smaller percentage. What's the percentage of 10 points out of 250? Okay, that's 4%, right? So obviously when it's no lower scoring situations, when the conditions are tougher, Sparing actually makes a bigger impact like in terms of percentage-wise, right, that you, when it affects a score. But obviously every spare is actually more than 10 points because it's 10 points plus the pinfall from your next pins. Okay, good spare from a national bowler here on lane 8. Hmm, I can't really see his line, but I think he's playing a very similar line. Sending ball out from I think fourth and a half arrow, playing a little bit deeper, tighter line. So make, making sure that his ball doesn't go beyond, I think, bot nine to 10 at the break point. They're having the ball hook into the pocket. So nice strike here. So same thing, same break point I mentioned earlier. So sending a ball, I think it's about fourth and a half, fifth arrow. So it hits four, four and a half, fifth arrow at the arrow zone. So break point still stays around the 10 board region. And then it hooks back into the pocket. So that seems to be prevailing strategy for the guys. And I think if we look across the lane, there's, most of them should be playing in the exact same area. Exact same area of the lane. Okay, so for this, our bowler in grey, uh, the Under Armour t-shirt here, he's actually playing a little bit of a tighter line. So he's sending his ball out around in between third and fourth arrow in the arrow zone. His break point is the same here. So around here, his break point is the same. Uh, the reason he could play such a tight line is because of his higher ball speed. So his ball can stay straighter longer. And then same thing says that at the same break point, around board 9 to 10, and then hooks into the pocket. And he gets a nice spread. Okay, so that's a spare shot. Ooh, missing a spare again. So I'm seeing a lot of missed spares from our national bowlers and youth bowlers here. That's quite rough. 
spare is very important. Yep, another good strike here. I think this is Joven, right? So if I saw the name just before it disappeared. So playing around this line, sending the ball out from around fifth arrow. And the ball stay around here. Ball's nine and ten, and then hooks into the top. Hmm, this is quite unorthodox from uh I can't see his name here from the BIS bowler on the left. But he actually sent his ball right in a pretty tight line actually. I think it's like straight down third arrow or third between third and fourth arrow. It's quite a tight line because his break point since it's around bot ten, so his ball didn't travel much diagonally across the lane. But somehow I think with his high ball speed he was able to make the ball stay for whatever reason, or maybe he used a lot a uh, much less aggressive ball in order to make his ball stay in that line and he got the strike. Yep, missing a spare again. So miss spares costing this the boys very heavily in terms of their qualifying score. So this squad is done maybe waiting for a lane change. And I believe uh that's it for today's analysis video, right? So they still have some games to go before their squad ends because their squad ends around 10 p.m. So you still have about one hour to go. Okay, and we can see from our bowler in the black t-shirt here. Can't see his name on top. Also playing a similar area again. So sending his ball around fourth to in between fourth and fifth arrow at the arrow zone. Goes to the break point around here. And then it hooks into the pocket. So around bot nine and ten on the break point. So let's see if our national bowler can't see his name thing is Ashton. Oh wow, he plays in the exact line that I drew on the lane. So you can see that the red line. So let's just repeat it, right? Just for you know, just just to just to see. So I drew that red line on the lane for the previous bowler because that was what the previous bowler played. And then I believe this is Ashton. I am not sure our national bowler here, one-handed bowler. Lands the ball straight there, goes goes down the lane exactly where I predicted. Uh, ball breaks exactly around you no know, the second ball area. I think that's around ball uh nine to ten. Stays there and then hooks into the pocket. Unfortunately, didn't get the strike day one. But yeah, that's the line that they are playing. So yeah, so I guess that's it. So for lane strategy, so generally some general pointers for lane strategy. Uh, is that you want to look at the lane chart, try to identify where the slope is. So for ex for this particular chart, right, you you want to aim like your break point to be usually where the uh either your arrow zone or the break point to be where the slope on the pattern is. So in this particular challenging pattern, uh, which they you know the SBF calls it national patterns A, the slope here is in bots. 10 to 13 right so the breakpoint should be around this area 10 to 13 also based on the length of the pattern as well because this is a medium distance pattern at 44 feet so it's okay to have your breakpoint around 10 to 13 obviously if this is a much shorter pattern let's say it's 34 feet then your breakpoint has to be on the outside so around board 3 to 5 right if you are playing like a much shorter pattern and if you're playing a much longer pattern, let's say if it's 50 feet or like 50, like 50 feet, for example, 50 feet is considered long, then your break point has to be a lot more to the inside, probably like board 15, because your ball has a lot of room uh, to curve on the lane, because most of the lane, like if it's 50 feet, that means uh, five out of six, uh, like five out of six. So like mostly like 80, almost 80% 80 of the lane is covered in oil. So your ball will skip 80% of the way down the lane. So your ball only has a very limited area to hook. Then in that case, your break point has to be a lot uh, closer to the pocket. 
So that's for a longer pattern. So it's a medium distance pattern for the four. So that so we can have, have our breakpoint around bots nine to ten. Uh, there's that. There is also the fact that we want to play this particular slope, which is the slope region of the lane here, which is in this particular case, this is bots uh 10 to 10 to 12 actually like 10 to 13 ideally but actually strictly speaking it's like 10 to 12 and you want to avoid the areas where you see these flat plateaus right do you see the this flat area of the lane like uh 7 to 10 uh no 8 to 10 you want to avoid it right because it's a flat area 5 to 7 you want to avoid it and then obviously 2 3 and 4 you want to avoid it so avoiding this flat patterns on the lane and going for this slope area is uh, the ideal strategy to go for. Then that is generally that. And then obviously from the from the line that you start, right? So let's say you're starting in maybe this area. Okay, so let's say you start your line around here, right? Your ball goes around here. So let's say you're starting this general line, for example. This is not my best illustration. Can I draw a better one? I think I can I need to draw it with straight lines. Right, around here, right? Here, then have your ball break around board 10, right? So around here, and then it hooks into the pocket. So let's say you start around this line. So obviously, as the lane dries up, you have to move to the left. So I'll use blue to, maybe I'll use yellow, right, to draw the next line. So just move like five boards in with your feet. If you're a high referee bowler, then your break point should generally stay the same around this area five to, uh, around board 10 and then your ball should hook into the pocket and then as the lanes progress you go even deeper i'm going to use red again then i'm going to shift another five bots click four to five bots left with your feet then the arrow zone you're going to shift about another like two two bots at the arrow zone so project it to the same break point and have the ball in the pocket and then as it goes even later in the squad, as the lane dries up even more, you'll move even further in another like maybe five bots with your feet, another two bots, two to three bots with the arrows at the arrow zone. Then same, you're aiming for the same break point. So you're gonna play, you're gonna try and hit the same break point the whole uh, day or whole block of qualifying. So just that your the way you approach the line, how you send the ball to the line, you will generally go deeper and deeper. So the challenge for playing these deeper lines is that your the ball needs to be able to recover from these uh, deeper lines, or you need to have the ball speed to be able to send your ball down into this break point. Because if your ball is traveling too slowly, it might hook too early before it reaches the break point and your ball will overhook. Or uh, if your ball goes too fast or if the referee isn't enough, then it might actually miss the break point here. So the drawback is that if your ball misses to the right, like it skits a bit too far, and it goes into this out bound region that is in the bot 5 to 10 range, then your ball will never recover. So that's the general strategy. If uh, you have any questions for this kind of uh, this level of lane play, you can leave your comments below. And as usual, if anybody's interested in coaching, you can contact me at my contact details, which is listed in the video description. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.